Okay. Here. Actually, oh, he has, Chad has Carl in here, but you're not Carl. You're not Carl. All right. Welcome in, guys. Welcome in. It is Tuesday night, a little episode of Building the Broncos for Breakfast. I am Nick Kendall, and joining me today again for, he, as he mentioned before we started the show, our third show today uh, together. Scott, you got to be getting sick of me. Uh, Scott Kennedy. Scott, <laughs> good, uh, it's, good a, it's, it's a good thing you're easy to get along with. I'm the, I'm the tough one. Um, it, it is, but it was <clears throat> very different subjects. You know, last yeah. week I was like, I don't want to try and do a solo show on Thursday by myself when I've talked everything Broncos there is to talk about. There's nothing new I could use to carry a show. But today was actually a news day. Mm -hmm. You know, so since you, you, you last saw us, there's been a lot happening over at Dove Valley. So there, there, I wasn't too worried about it today. I, I knew we'd have plenty of, of news to talk about and break down. And plus it's a, it's a little bit of a different crowd uh, in yeah. the evening. So they, have, they haven't heard all of our shtick, you know, no. by, by the, by the end of the day. Yeah, no, we need some, uh, we, I guess we can get right into it. Some anti linebacker propaganda. No, but first we want to say hello to some people in here. Um, obviously, uh, building Broncos, Carl will be back next week. He had to take care of the kids. He's got the, uh, sick bug going around there. So, uh, Scott's tapping in today, and I'm Nick Kendall on these Tuesday night shows. We got Dylan in here, as always, saying, Set Broncos Country. Make sure you guys hit the like button on the way in and subscribe if you haven't already. Dylan, we need to have that subscribe all caps as well. This next next time. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. They're teasing you. Uh, <laughs> Diamond Rattler, too. Let's talk about the all caps. Always. Boom, let's Boom. ride. Good to see you, Diamond Rattler. Hope you're doing well. Kevin Gray coming in saying, Good evening, Broncos Country. Nick and Scott, I think it will take four or five weeks to gel in the season. What do you think? Let's ride. So, Scott, uh, gelling this season. Uh, is that kind of a myth? What do, you, what do you think? There's just so many new variables. I'm curious what you, your thoughts are on this. No, I, I don't think it'll take that long. I think, you know, even teams that have been together for a long time, you always hear the phrase peaking at the right time. Um, so are they playing the best? You know, they could have a game where they put up 50 points in the first three, four weeks of the season and then turn around and, and score 20. Mm -hmm. So I, I think this with the, the veteran leadership, and the quarterback and the as hard as they've been working together. And frankly, they're chomping at the bit to get out there. I, I think we could see some fireworks pretty early on on offense. Yep. I, I think that's possible. The defense, the second string defense did kind of worry me in that Buffalo game and some of those weak areas, but uh, I think it's possible. It could take a little bit of time to gel. And some recent examples of that happening are uh, obviously everybody knows the 2012 Broncos started off the year two and three. And I think they only lost one more game after starting two and three that season. And also the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers with uh, Tom Brady two years ago. They, I think they were a wild card team. They didn't win the division. Uh, this, I think the Saints took that division two years ago. And then Tom Brady and them, they all of a sudden, like, I think six weeks to go in the regular season, it clicked. So could be four to five weeks, could be longer. Maybe it doesn't click. Maybe it's out of the gate. I mean, gosh, anything is possible, but uh, it's going to be better than it has been. I guarantee that. Also getting better in here with the superstars coming in over on Facebook. Joshua Brooks dropping in a silent uh, support for us. Thank you so much, Joshua. We appreciate you. If you have any questions for us, make sure you're getting getting at us in here. You know, we'll consider this a down payment uh, for a question if you have one. William coming in saying, I'm guessing they are banking on Jonas Griffith to be good to go one week or two, which is why they released Schobert. Um, so yeah, Joe Schobert, he's, uh, I guess he's, he came in. He's like, oh yeah, I was in Colorado already. I've been hiking and fishing in the mountains my guy. Um, but, uh, he looked, let's just call it as it is terrible, uh, in that, uh, bills game. I know it's early for him, but, uh, he's gone just as quickly as he appeared. Uh, he's gone. So, uh, Joe Schober, good luck elsewhere. I guess maybe that's the end of the career, but, uh, that Buffalo game, that tape was not good. Real quick on this, Nick, I wanted to kind of get back to the, the gelling point. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. as far as, you know, the team gelling. Now there was this, the specific, the question was about offense. OK, or was it? Because that's what I had in my mind. Just the team. Uh, it's a gel in general. OK, so I'm thinking offense for the most part, um, you know, because the, the team, yes, they got hot at the right time. They started playing well at the end of the season. Um, but points scored with Tom Brady and, and that, that first year. And I'll go week one all the way down. 23, 31, 28, 38, 19, 38, 45, 3, 46. That was the first half of the season. When's the last time you saw Denver put up some of those 330 numbers or even the f -f -f -f, that F word numbers? So, God. you know, they, you know, did they come together as a team? Again, was that gelling or was that, you know, hey, we're, yeah, we're gelling. We're playing, we're getting hot at the right time. We're playing together at the right time. And that ne isn't necessarily the new quarterback coming in because they were able to score some points early. It's just sometimes 
teams get better as they go along. And mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe I'm talking myself in a circle here, but I, I just think that I expect to see points early on. I really yeah. do. So as far as that part of gelling, Kevin, I expect to see points early, especially from what we were used to it. What, 19 a game, if you were lucky? Was it even 19? Those years are just a blur to me uh, of darkness. And, <laughs> I don't know uh, what you're pain. talking about. <laughs> yeah, this, that didn't happen as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but um, also you're talking about the offense specifically gelling, getting better. That's assuming everybody stays healthy. You know, knock on wood, but like maybe you're assuming, you know, they're going to keep growing and getting better, new skiing, quarterback, chemistry. But then maybe something happens with one of the key players. And even though you're the cohesive units a bit better, you have a talent drop. So that's always part of the game of football as well. Unfortunately, um, Phil McLaughlin coming in here, Phil, hope you're doing well, but uh, he says evening, Nick and Scott hashtag let's ride. Good to see you, Phil and Chris Hernandez over on Facebook with the orange and blue heart, orange and blue heart. Uh, thank you so much, Chris. Good evening to you. Hope you're doing well. Yeah. appreciate you coming with the stars and, uh, and uh, you still need to email me. Skinnity, S K I N N E D Y at Gmail. How to pronounce your name? Uh, Nathafon, Mr. Noble. Mr. Noble says, Wait, Schobert got released. Um, and Kathy, Kathy had the exact same phrase I did uh, when I first read, read this news was, Whoa, it's like we hardly knew you for real. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we had a pencil. I don't know if we all did, but we had him penciled into the starting lineup you know, yeah. in week one until Jonas Griffith was healthy. So what does it, what does this say about, does this say anything about Jonas Griffith? Or is this more an indictment of where Joe Schobert is in his career? It's probably a little bit of both, uh, to be honest, but uh, you had a lot of money that you could save by releasing a uh, Schobert there. And he didn't look to be much of a difference maker. I mean, his tackling was not great as run fits. I know it was early, but you know, chase and tackle was pretty easy to, to see out there. So um, <laughs> I, it was not good. Yeah, it, it hits me as, okay, you worked him out and passed for a reason the first time. Um, you know, now I'm sitting there as I'm coming, getting ready for the show. I'm thinking, how do I spin? Can I spin this positively? You know, I like to be able to try and see two sides of everything. It makes you a better debater uh, for, you know, to, to try and anticipate, you know, the, the other arguments and stuff. And I'm like, I, I really can't. I, I can't think, you know, how does that meaning go? You know, thanks, Joe, for coming in. You're a true pro working out. Um, we respect you too much to put you on the practice squad, but Hey, we know you're close. Keep, keep your phone on. I, I really, I can't think of, of anything. We needed to get down to 80 and, you know, I, I couldn't think of any positive where this is like, we might bring you back. I no. mean, you're down to 80. You, you could still use them in camp. I just, it, it, to me, it was like, listen, um, we brought you in once we didn't sign you. We should have probably just stuck with that one. Sorry for wasting your time. Here's a severance check. Yeah, it's just, it was a it's a little odd. The whole thing's a little odd. Yeah, I mean, they also worked him out and didn't sign him right away at the same time. So I'm guessing they saw his level of play and thought by the time rosters get down to 53, we're going to find somebody who's cheaper. Uh, we have better development plan for and maybe even better uh, than Joe Schobert at this point in his career. So and we're still three weeks away, yep. three full weeks away from from kickoff. So. Yep. Again, it seems like Jonas Griffith has been out a while, you know, three weeks to I've heard doctors, uh, surgeons that have talked that have like cut on athletes, you know, their muscle density and everything. It's just different. Yeah. Um, I, I call these folks, you know, they're just a different caliber of human being. Three weeks is a long time for uh, an NFL caliber athlete. So, you know, hopefully we will see Jonas. And, and again, we asked a question. How much are we going to see two linebackers on the field at the same time, two inside guys at the same time anyway? Um, yeah. If it goes like it did against the Bills, you're going to want to see two a lot more often than you probably would plan to because you're going to need yeah. the help and run support right up the middle of your defense. Yep. And honestly, I thought Singleton looked better than uh, Schobert in that game also. So maybe the Broncos thought the same thing, like, oh, we can save a little bit of money here on that one for a guy where we already have better in-house options. Um, let's just go with it. So, uh Kind of wild they brought him in and he's quickly gone. I mean, but that's that's the NFL. Once you hit that like 30 year old mark, oh god, I'm I'm 30. But once you hit that 30 year old mark, yeah, uh, you are yesterday's news, and it's not about the name on the back of the jersey. A lot of fans, you know, a lot of fans have the same opinion of players as like the Madden ratings. You know, like, oh, I recognize that player. He's gotta be good, gotta give him the veteran bump. Um, but uh in the NFL, a lot different out there. Once you hit 30 for most positions, 
Well, and you get it more expensive too. You know, old and expensive is a tough way to go. Uh, Luckily, we've got young and expensive Gary Leeds Palmer coming up with some stars. Thank you for being patient, Gary. Gary says, hi, Nick and Scott and Broncos country. Go Broncos and let's ride. We certainly certainly appreciate all the support. Every show we do, it's it just means it means the world to us. Andrew Baker coming in also. So, what's up, Nick Scott and fam? That's that's all y'all. I know we're still in preseason, but week one is around the corner, gang. Woohoo! Or is that just a woo? That's a that's a Ric Flair woo. Sorry, I messed that one up. Um, Lawrence coming in is a woohoo. Um, but let's let's ride. So Andrew, thank you again for the stars. The Facebook crowd is. Uh, is uh is coming in hot and heavy early this morning early this evening with the stars so thank you folks yep thank you so much we appreciate you guys coming in wanted to say hello to uh with first no fear good evening nick and scott and all of broncos country um we also got chris coming in saying about to get a mile high while i watch the show okay chris well um enjoy your flight um we also got uh paul coming in saying a good evening uh nick and scott and uh behind the scenes scott scott's on the front end this time um, and also a saying, hello, Broncos country. Let's ride. Good to see you, Paul. Um, Jay Cozad, I, I guess I could that based on the title. Yeah, uh, he was I'm in, sure. they were in early. So appreciate yep. you being in early, Paul. Appreciate you, Paul. Jay Cozad, I guess I couldn't care less about the backup quarterback for the Broncos this year. Yeah, let's get into this. Um, Brett Rippon apparently is going to be starting uh, this week three game uh, against the the Vikings, right? The Minnesota Vikings. I had to look it up. Yeah, yep. I, I definitely looked it up. So it was uh, it was the Vikings because it is a 9 p.m. Eastern game. So Oof. miss me on that one, folks. That thing gets Zinch. over about 1 a.m. I'm not Good podding night. at 1 a.m. Good night. Um, but yeah, no, that's a uh, that's a late game, and uh, Scott will be hopefully catching some Z's. Actually, by then. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's about when I get up the first time to pee in the middle of the night. Oh so. God. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, definitely the Broncos quarterback. So that Rippin looked better than Johnson in this last game. Granted, you know, the level of competition, the guys he was going against, a little bit tougher there, a bigger difference in talent for Broncos twos versus the ones, twos versus twos even, and then uh, threes versus threes, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's going to be ripping in this one. Still sounds like there's a chance for the quarterback battle. Uh, I think still you probably have to put the odds pretty high on Josh Johnson being the winner of it, uh, but there's more of a chance uh, than probably thought going into, the, going into this uh, week two game. Preseason week yeah, and, and Jay, it's not an overly in, exciting battle for me mm. either. Again, yeah. it's like, hey, who who's the first clipboard holder? You know, if he goes down, because again, if 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 Russell Wilson goes down for an extended period of time, the what you're hoping for for the season is a lot of it has changed. Um, you know who we haven't seen for a while. Hmm. It's Ethan. Ethan, say hello to the evening crowd. Oh, Your name is on here all the time whenever we update super uh super chats. The DWI guys, if he's not at the top, he's pretty damn close. Uh Ethan is in the States. Usually he's uh he's our London and calling, so the night shows are a little bit late, but Ethan is in the States this week. At least last time I chatted with him, he was coming in saying Broncos for breakfast and supper. Broncos talk anytime is good by me. And you're good by us too. Feels like it's been a couple days, which feels longer because Nick and I have done like 14 shows in the last you know few days. So welcome in. Glad you're here. Yeah, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Sorry that uh, a lot of stuff talking about uh, the linebackers here today for the Broncos position that hopefully you're here for that. But uh, thank you so much, Ethan. We appreciate it. We also had Jetty Splash in here, too, mm-hmm. uh, with the high guys, $5 over on YouTube. Hey, Jetty Splash, hope you're doing well. Uh, we appreciate you. Roy's in the house. Good evening, Nick. Uh, Scott and Nick. Yes, I know it's only preseason. I'm only cautiously optimistic about our season. The depth levels need to be better. And yeah, that was really shown uh, in this last game. And your depth got a little bit uh, weaker as well. I know he wasn't having the best preseason, but Michael Ojemudia, probably better than Fayon Hicks and the other cornerbacks behind him, Bless Austin, et cetera, et cetera. Michael Ojemudia, dislocated uh, elbow as well. Going to be out a bit. Uh, I didn't think Damari Mathis had the best game. So depth there. And then the real depth area that should be concerning. And I'll put this one on T for Scott. The interior defensive line got mm-hmm. shellacked. That, that's the only one, honestly, that I'm really scared of. Because, yeah, the 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 Bills twos and threes put a whooping on the Broncos twos. And the, they're, they're not all like the Bills, okay? You're, the, all the teams aren't like the Bills. And for the most part, your ones are going to go against ones, especially on offense. Your offense, yeah. your ones are going to be on the field. You're going to rotate your receivers where you have really good depth. Your only rotation on offense is your skill players. Okay, I like my wide receiver room. Quarterback doesn't 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 rotate, and I love my running back room. So my depth on offense, I feel really 
really good about. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, if you want to feel better, watch someone else. Watch, turn on and watch a replay of the Falcons and Jets. And watch what most teams look like when their twos and threes hit the field. It's awful. It's unwatchable. No, they're all not yeah. all going to be like the Bills. You can go head-to-head -head with the ones and, and win, without a doubt. Depth is good, especially with injuries. But you've got to have more depth on that interior line. We, yeah. we were talking about conclusions, drawing conclusions. Uh, I think David came in this morning and said, you, you, we wouldn't, shouldn't draw any conclusions for this season, right? Absolutely not. No conclusions for this season. Still feel good about the season. The conclusion I am willing to draw, though, is you're, you need a couple more big bodies in on the defensive line. Jonathan Harris, uh, and well, it's not Jonathan. It's Jonathan Harris. That's his name. I've already forgotten his name. It's 92. Um, and McTelvin and Ajim were bad. Really, really bad. Marquis Spencer's already gone. Those are, you know, three of the guys, three of the main culprits. Okay, I get it. One's gone already. Two are on their way. Yeah. Who's, who's going to come in? And there's going to be about a thousand players hit the waiver wire in the next eight days. Literally mm -hmm. a thousand. There's going to be some changes, Nick. I, I'm, I'm yeah. convinced. And four of your big snap earners, you'd think on the interior defensive line have not played yet or have played sparingly. I think Deshaun Williams had like 12 snaps in the Bills mm -hmm. game. Haven't seen Draymond Jones yet. Haven't seen DJ Jones yet. Haven't seen Mike Purcell yet. Uh, so especially the Joneses, those are your two big guys. And four is a good number for an interior defensive line in a uh, three, four, but still uh, you should have some concerns about that. You just wish there's something we harped on it even before preseason started. It's like, I wish they had one more good plus player on that interior defensive line. That way Deshaun Williams could be that super sub, you know, off the bench, just one more big body who you really can trust in the run game. And I don't know if they have that guy right now. I guess we're all, I'm waiting with bated breath to see if uh, Mike Purcell can hold up and return back to his 2020 form. Uh, but We'll see. Um, we'll see. So uh, thank you so much, Roy. Good to see you. Dom in the house. Oops, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, we got Charlie, Charlie in the house. And Charlie's working late. Hell yeah. Uh, working late. Great. Great background conversation. Hopefully we can make the uh, the time go by you a little bit faster. Sometimes it's nice when you kind of get lost in the conversation and <laughs> that clock does a full circle and an hour is gone. Yeah. You're like, yes, that was nice. Yes, so sir. So hopefully we can make it, make it go by quickly for you, Charlie. Appreciate you spending time with us. Yeah, absolutely. We got Dom in the house too. Say my boys. Good evening, Nick Scott and Broncos country. How do you feel about Joe getting cut and Brett getting starting QB position this weekend? Denver Broncos for life. So yeah, uh, Joe Schobert uh, being outright released a veteran vested because he's a veteran vested veteran. Say that 10 times fast. Uh, mm -hmm. The Broncos also waived running back Stevie Scott, the third and wide receiver Trey Quinn, who you guys remembered uh, dropped that kickoff return there. I think it was in the fourth quarter and also a, uh, Offensive tackle Casey Tucker, who has the uh, had the dislocated big toe. Uh, Casey Tucker described it as looking like a unicorn horn on his foot. Um, not great. Uh, and also Tom Compton placed on the reserve physically unable to perform list uh, to start the season, which means that he can be activated after week four. And Scott, I think that's the big benefit um, here. We talked about the offseason pup. Mm -hmm. You can't go on the regular season pup unless you are on the pup beforehand you have and stay on it the whole time. so it's a prequel of sorts yes i don't think that's true though unless it's oh unless it's for the four ga four game one yes it's for the Otherwise, four game you'd one. have to put them on the longer ones yeah. okay so thank you it had to mean something so we it couldn't clicked. figure it out so you can't go on the four game one unless you were already initially on because we talked about this before y'all with randy gregory was on the initial pup list and it's a precaution that's so the the initial pup list is a precaution because as you're saying, if someone, if they're not on there, say someone gets hurt and you, you end up to a pup list now, it would, they would not be eligible. It would be longer than four weeks. That's what, yep. that's what I'm hearing. And that makes yep. sense. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Good. It, had to, it had to mean something. Yeah, I mean, right. <laughs> right. I know there's a ton of lawyers out there, Ethan, you know, making a lot of money to write up stuff that nobody else pays attention to. But uh, that one was just like, what the hell? Yeah, what's going on? Um, we got Amar coming in saying, who do you think will uh, be bringing in at cornerback to replace OJ? I don't know if they will. They might just go with the young guys, but we want to see what the roster looks like. It's probably not going to happen until after this week three. You might see a flurry of action there when the teams go from that big cut from 80 to, um, what is it, 55, uh, 60 with the practice it's, squad. Yeah, so to 53 plus practice squad. Is it 11 players maybe? No, it's 16. 16 on the practice yeah. squad. So you're, yeah. you're, you're not going to door close to 70, but... Those guys, if I'm not mistaken, have to pass through waiver wire too. So everybody else gets a shot at them. 
So I don't know that you're bringing in anyone. The question might be, Amar, is just like, okay, who's, who steps up? You know, who do we bring on to the field? Yeah. Uh, if, if we're looking at depth chart, and I know Damari Mathis has been a player that has gotten a lot of discussion um, as far as doing good work at camp. Uh, he got thrown to the Wolves into the deep end against the Buffalo Bills, struggled a little bit. That's okay. He was a rookie going against, you know, he's a rookie later on draft pick going against um, the ones for a couple of series. Um, but I, I think it's like who who could come in, who could see, who's going to benefit the most, who's going to see some more snaps. Damari Mathis could be that guy, Amar. Yep, absolutely. And we'll see some other guys come in. And, and uh, with Schobert getting cut, do you think we'll see Alexander Johnson back? I mean, the way the run defense looked, they could probably use him because uh, Alexander Johnson, you know, not dynamic in coverage, not dynamic sideline to sideline, but he's what, 6'4", 245 pounds coming downhill. I mean, maybe. Uh, I don't know if he's bringing much special teams wise, and that's probably what you're expecting, but he's still out there. I just think if they were interested in him, they probably would have made a move by now or something. We had this discussion the day before Schobert was signed, and it was mm-hmm. AJ Johnson, it was Alexander Johnson, or or Schobert. And I, I made the point at the time that the familiarity with Alexander Johnson in the locker room presence may be a detriment to him being re-signed for, mm-hmm. for all we know. It's just, you know, it, it's if you're going to go and you're going to take a pay cut and you feel like you've been disrespected, it's like, listen, I don't mind going from $6 million to $3 million, but not for you, not after you set out. I'm going to go do that somewhere else and I'm going to earn it and I'm going to prove that, that I, I belong. And again, we don't know all the locker room dynamics but I think if he was a, a legit option, he is the same discussion we had last week and Schobert was signed the next day. Yep. I just, I don't see Alexander Johnson uh, coming back to this team. Yep. Uh, right now. And I think that uh, another thing with Schobert there was, I think they made the choice that, Hey, we actually like Stranod on this roster already making more plays um, better than Schobert. And he looked better than that. I mean, Stranod is still, you know, kind of a, undersized under athletic uh linebacker he's smooth in space <laughs> that's a he, bad way to go through life son yeah it's, it's a bad uh, way to play linebacker yeah that's it's about a quarterback i scouted he's 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 too small he's underarmed and he's slow what else do you do you are you looking for here yeah no it's uh he's smooth in coverage and i think he's got a good processor there but he's kind of a little bit of a s- safety linebacker hybrid. So I'm mean, making some special teams play though. That matters. Um, and Phil coming in and saying, I was surprised about Schober. That guy was on the street when he was brought in. I thought he would get one more game. He was actually in a, a river or a Creek somewhere. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, that's uh, you're right on that. Maybe they could save some more money. Maybe it's, you know, we, we saw enough um, buddy. We appreciate you. We're going to give you a chance elsewhere. Um, but uh, that's how it is. And uh, man, kind of just laughable. The Jags gave him, you know, a monster contract freaking monster contract two years ago and we're already talking about him being out of the league at 28 or 29 maybe he'll bounce yeah. might, might land somewhere but that's that's football man yeah it's uh again you could get him for cheap because he was already he's already been compensated 12 million dollars for the season so while he's out there rainbow trout fishing he's he's already been paid 20, 12 million for for this year yeah not that way i we were nick and i were having that discussion earlier about coming in and being on the training camp and making a couple thousand dollars i'm like hell it wouldn't be worth it to uh, to do it for uh at, at linebacker that's for sure i would be killed yeah um i, would I just might maybe be a kicker maybe um you know in my best ever shape i could have at least survived as a wide receiver uh but not at this age for god's sakes a couple thousand dollars would not be worth it what is worth it is ethan coming back in he said waitman over martin at punter Looking to save some money now. Are there any players that you're looking to sign right now where money is the difference? You know that that, that we know of. Um, but if it is, Waitman's eight hundred and twenty-five thousand. Martin's a two point seven mil minus a four eighty-three dead cap, which is a two point three savings on Martin. And you keep the well, so you're saving what about one point five million net uh, if you choose um, um, Waitman over Martin, which is. A significant amount at special teams. You know, I mentioned last year people were kind of dogging on uh, Mike Purcell. I'm like, you're paying your kicker and your punter more than you're paying your starting nose guard. Let's have some perspective here. You know, mm-hmm. Purcell's a hell of a value for what you're paying him. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Martin also uh, rolled his ankle, so he wasn't uh, available for this uh, Bills game. So Waitman had a couple good punts. I mean, 
heck, if it's close, then you got to go with the younger guy. But uh, we'll we'll see in the end. That's I think that's uh, that's Dwayne Stukes' call, hundred percent. He'd look me in the eye, I'm like whichever one you want is fine with me, Mister Stukes. <laughs> um, he scares me. Jake Ozad coming in. Peyton must have his eye on bringing in another inside linebacker. Maybe um, I or, think, he, or or Jonas he, Griffiths a lot closer to coming back than we think. Yeah. Or it's the field. We saw enough from Schobert, and there's somebody out there that we think we can get for, let's say, 90% of what Schobert was for 20% of the money, you know, or some, something yeah. tiny. So it's probably or, or Schobert was just that bad. You know, their initial yeah. their initial re- evaluation of him during the first workout was pass. Yeah. Uh, then they brought him in for a week, and they passed again. So um, go with your gut. Your your gut instincts usually <clears throat> the right one. Yeah. Absolutely. Good evening, Broncos country for bre- uh, Broncos for breakfast, dudes. I always like a little breakfast for dinner. <laughs> breakfast for dinner is always a good way to go. I had some breakfast for dinner um, when I was out backpacking this weekend. It was a good time. Michael Crabtree had a legit dinner, other than you know mixing together some couple of cereals and and having and having cold cereal for dinner. I had quesadillas. It was oh my gosh, I know, crazy. I came home early. See, the kids get older, I can just leave them at practice. So yeah. I'll see you later. You got your phone, okay, buddy? Bye. Peace. See ya. Go good luck. Get some dinner. And uh, and come talk to Broncos country, man. Good times. Uh, now I'm hungry. Uh, Broncos country. Michael Crabtree <laughs> coming in. Broncos country is the best fans. We appreciate you guys commenting. Uh, we got not. Uh, we got to not have missed tackles. Yeah, the missed tackles. The defensive line, the front seven, definitely concerning. Hopefully, it's better when the starters get in there. But uh, you're more the defensive line. The defensive front seven is pretty rotational. So definitely looking for that. And Jetty Splash coming in saying it's a piping plover for the picture there. See, I, I knew it was some sort of type of piper or something. So, uh, that was a puffin or, or something along those lines. It's got way too sticky legs, but, uh, puffins are, they look more like penguins, don't they? Yes. A little yep. rounder. Okay. Yep. That's All the right. one in buddy. The show. <laughs> I tell you what, I had the show going on in my backyard. I had three doe, three fawns and a buck. Uh, there were mm. seven deer in my backyard this, mm. this afternoon. They were just setting up shop. They're like, Hey, bring your friends. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, Backs up right to the Chattahoochee Natural Forest, natural national forest, and yeah. um, inside the gate, you're not allowed to do anything with them. So it's basically a deer sanctuary, which yeah. I love. I'm like, hey guys, how you doing? Fawns lay down, take a nap. So Just keep your we can, talk, away. we can we can talk nature all the time. Yeah, where I was camping this weekend, <laughs> not to go too far down the track. I was about mm-hmm. eight thousand feet looking over a lake, and I had a buddy with me who was a big bear hunter in the country here and uh yeah i know sorry scott um but we had uh binoculars and we watched and we could see six bears um down the way and we saw a big male get in a tussle with a smaller one and chase them off and my god those things can fly it was oh, yeah. unbelievable 30 to 35 watch. miles an hour at the top speed and maybe we can get a couple in for the defensive line that'd be great um we got andrew hopkins coming in the jonas brothers will lighten uh that d uh will tighten up that d line you hope so um mm-hmm. but question is the it's the depth um and right that's such a depth position. We talk about it. Aaron Donald's a unicorn playing what 85% of snaps on the interior defensive line. It doesn't happen. Most of the good players in the interior defensive line play 60% of the snaps. So if you have 60% from Draymond and 60% from DJ, you have a full another starter worthy of snaps out there, if not more. Um, so the depth in the rotations right. across three there. spots, yeah, across three spots too. Yep. So um, that that's the problem. Andrew is, you know, oh, they they ran. You know, the Bills ran their starters against uh, against our twos. Well, not the whole game for one, and and two. The other part of that is that happens for about two series a game. You know, where the ones are going against twos every game. Yeah. There's two series where your reserve defensive linemen are going to be in, and what I saw was not good enough and could lose you if that's ten points. Every time those guys are on the field, if you're losing 10 points from your reserve defensive line, you're not going to have the season you want to have. Um, that's that's the concern. Um, again, my conclusion from the, the weekend was we need we need a couple more 300 pounders coming into Dove Valley. Yeah. And I don't think in preseason in general, it's really like kind of when you're scouting college football. You know, you don't really want to make massive grand sweeping conclusions about the entire system, the scheme with you know, the run defense itself, but the individual matchups is what we are looking at and we can really evaluate and, you know, not to harp on them too much, but, you know, Jonathan Harris, McFelvin Najim, uh, Fayon Hicks, uh, Albert Okoyben on run blocking, you know, these kind of things like stand out. It's like, Ugh, 
that has to be better. We cannot uh, Josh Johnson uh, against, you know, the week one or week two, excuse me, not very good. So things we got to uh, worry about it just the individual players, but it's still just, it's a small bit of data uh, that we're going on. That is don't want to make a mountain out of mohole uh, with it all. We got Darius coming in here saying kind of worried about that run defense personnel wise. It should be a concern. Hopefully mm-hmm. when you have your, you know, Josie Jewel getting everybody lined up correctly and uh, with the intelligence and the instincts factor there and you're starting to Jones boys up front. So it'll be a little bit better. Also uh, not enough. We don't talk about it enough, but the, uh, the edge rushers too getting whipped uh, for the most part in that game. Not Baron Browning was okay, but uh, mm-hmm. Nick Benito. Oh my God. His run defense is so bad. Um, Jonathan Cooper, Malik Reed got poked in the eye was out after that, but you know, you don't have really strong edge run defenders either. So it's just the whole system of that front seven. A little concerning uh, on paper. Yeah, and there, you know, when you're talking DJ Jones coming in and playing in the middle of a front three, or you know, I, I still think we're going to see a lot of two down interior with two edge, two stand up yeah. edge. I think we're going to see a lot of four man fronts, and then you know, possibly, then you've got Baron Browning coming in as a an old fashioned you know outside linebacker, you know, where he could drop and and not, maybe not just a a designated pass rusher. Um, but yeah, the the run defense was a concern last year. Uh, you know, I, I said the word bullied so many times, you probably got sick of it. Mm-hmm. And the big move coming in, you lose Shelby Harris, you bring in DJ Jones. We'd like to think that's going to be an upgrade, but we don't know that for sure. And what we've seen is the guys that didn't play last year, there's a reason why they didn't play last year. You have a bunch of depth. Now, on the whole, Nick, there are four potential game changers on that defense that you'll have back. You know, mm-hmm. they're, but they're on the, they're on the perimeter. They're mm-hmm. two edge guys, Randy Gregory and Bradley Chubb, and then uh, a cornerback and a safety and Pat Sertan and Justin Simmons. Those will absolutely make a difference. I can commit oh, more yeah. guys to the run when I have Justin Simmons and Pat Sertan back there and a healthy, and a healthy Ronald Darby. Um, but you don't want to have to make up for a deficiency. That's, mm-hmm. that's when you start getting into, into, into a little bit of trouble, Nick. Yeah, and luckily for the Broncos, uh, the AFC West, for the most part, is not a... You don't have a bunch of Tennessee Titans, Baltimore Ravens, uh, Cleveland Brown types of built teams where those type of styles might... Philadelphia Eagles last year, uh, those type of styles might be a big issue for the Broncos this year. The Chargers, you played all of them. <laughs> yeah, you played them all and you got... You're, you're up against wit. the AFC North and the yeah. Philadelphia Eagles. Those are probably the most physical teams in the league. Yep. And... Uh, Luckily for the Broncos, the AFC West seems to be built more like the Pac-12 or Big 12. You know, it's a little bit more spread it out, air it out. Not the best in the trenches. Though the Chiefs have a solid offensive line, but not really to punch you in the mouth uh, style of offense, at least what they have been. We'll see what they look like this year. I saw they were playing a lot of 21 personnel in their preseason games. But again, um, we'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Benjamin Flores coming in. The gruesome twosome. Howdy, gents. Keep up the good work. Go Broncos. Good to see you, Benjamin. And uh, also we got uh, Clee coming in saying it'd be nice to find a Brandon Marshall 2.0. The wide receiver or the uh, linebacker? Honestly, I'll take the wide receiver over the linebacker, but now we're just getting into my biases of uh, <laughs> what positions are more valuable. Well, it depends on uh, you know what you've already got. So yeah, for this team, too. you know, you, you might want Roquan Smith over. Oh, yes, Roquan Smith, but Brandon Marshall, talented wide receiver. Brandon Marshall, talented linebacker. It's yeah. <laughs> um, but Phil comes in with some more stories. Says, "Am I crazy? Or after next Tuesday, will our uh, D line depth improve? Possibly on both sides. Our line depth, uh, possibly on both sides. Again." I don't worry too much about the offensive line depth. You're seeing some of that depth now with Glasgow. You're seeing it right now with Calvin Anderson. Those are depth pieces, and those are pretty good depth pieces. Luke Wattenberg played about 60 snaps um, and held his own. Some nice improvement there. So the I'm not too worried about the offensive line depth. I am worried mm-hmm. about is it overall good enough? Dalton Reiser were thinking he's going to be a better fit in this offense and he's going to step up, but we haven't seen it. Lloyd Cushenberry has not been an average starter in the NFL to this point. We're thinking he's going to take that step up, but we haven't seen it. That worries me more than the bodies themselves is the top end. Uh, The good news is, is if one of those guys goes down, you've got ready-made replacements to come in. Uh, How fast can we expect to see, you know, you're you're talking about D-line depth improving. I'm convinced in the next three weeks, there's going to be another big body added to this team that will make the 53. Seems possible uh, for sure. They could use somebody. 
I do think the four top guys, though, will make a big difference. And Hennington looks good. They probably don't want to give up on a Wuzurike yet. So that's six guys right there. Um, but they definitely could use another guy who's versatile inside, outside. Uh, we got Jeremy Shantz, and I'm sure you guys already covered it, but was the Schobert cut a way to send a message to n- that no one is safe? He wasn't here long enough to be sending yeah. that no one is safe message. Um, it's a... Hopefully, Jonas Griffith's coming back soon. Oh my God, what is that? You know <laughs> what? I this is this is I want I was waiting to see you, EJ, because coming in red here. I mean, this is top rope. EJ came in with a super thanks. Now I've seen I've seen two people come in with super thanks now, uh, Ethan and EJ. And EJ dropped one of these red ones on the Valley Deep Divers on Friday night. So. I haven't seen you in the chat since then, and I'm glad you're here, not just for this. This goes without saying, uh, but to say what you did for for us at Dub Valley Deep Divers on a Friday night. And um, that's just, EJ, that's that's spectacular. Uh, I think there's maybe four or five people in the 500 club and uh, on, on Mile High Huddle. You're one of them, man. Appreciate it. I mean, it's... It, I had someone say, you know, when every once in a while this happens and you're flabbergasted, you really are. And, you know, some people got kind of mad in there. It's like, are you making it too much about the money? I'm like, you, you sit up here and have someone donate to what you're doing like this. And let me know how it makes you feel because it humbles the hell out of me. It really does. I mean, (laughs) holy cow, holy cow. Jeez. Wow. You know, it's uh, (laughs) Eric Johnson flexing a Stanley Cup money. Yeah, it's a dang man. This is uh, incredible. So thank you so much, EJ wherever you are. Um, that is, uh, <laughs> incredible. Um, don't even know what to say. Uh, pretty, inc- yeah. pretty yeah, darn shoot, amazing. EJ, sh- shoot me an email. It's, it's SK. I'll put it, I'll put it in the chat and anybody can email me. I don't particularly care. Uh, I answer them. Skinity at gmail.com. Oh. Whoops. That finger chain went here. <laughs> I posted here. Skinity at gmail.com. And let us send you just a little thank you for that. It's the least we can do. Yeah, God. I'll make sure I get that right. Skinnity at gmail.com. I put that into uh, into the YouTube chat under Mile High Huddle. Yeah. Uh, shoot me a note. Appreciate it. And then if Patrick, if you're watching, thanks again for the coffee. Our listeners oh, are awesome. So yeah. lioncoffee.com. Check it out. Patrick, this isn't an ad. Patrick sent us some coffee as just a way to say thank you. And I'm telling you, it's freaking delicious. I went through the French roast in a week and I'm not a French roast fan. I was like, yeah. let me get this like eating my vegetables. Let me get this out of the way. And uh, it was phenomenal. So I can't wait to dig into some of the other things. Anyway, uh, I had some awesome. of that coffee backpacking. It was a good time. Mountain Views, Madagascar vanilla coffee in my uh, French press, French press backpacking stove. Hard to beat. Hard to beat. Uh, Dave Necklerath coming in. Good evening, Broncos country. Nick and Scott. Also Ben saying, Nick, please tell me you carry some artillery with you in your backpacking. Bear spray is way more effective uh, than a any sort of art- artillery. I'm also in black bear uh, country, not grizzly country. Mm-hmm. Big difference. <laughs> Big difference, let me tell you. I'm I'm not messing with grizzlies. Yeah, you get, uh, you get hit by a black bear. You've done something stupid, really yep. stupid. Um, that said, I always kind of explain The Walking Dead, like kind of being a it's a pirate movie. Is what it's a pirate show is really what it is. It's like yeah, if you fall overboard, the sharks are going to eat you. But the scariest thing out there are the other pirates. Hmm. So it's not the bears that worry me so much, Nick. It's the other. It, People. other pirates out there <laughs> yep or exposure you know lost at sea kind of thing but uh definitely um also so some news also for the broncos in the front end so we talked we talked about the uh cuts nothing too uh surprising so i guess some guys that are still here that's like man what are we doing here like uh Mont- donnie lewis uh jr who does like they only played like five snaps against the bills and he was just roasted uh the first game i guess we need him for the special teams reps or What's the you? uh pre-season you only have to make three cuts yeah, true. You know, because, because uh, you had two injury designations that you only had to make three. Yep. You know, now if these guys are sitting around on 53 when you've got 27 more cuts to make, then you're going to be, you know, smack my head. On. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, Tom Compton going on the pup so they can bring him back week five. Uh, hopefully he comes back soon because he's definitely he's a really good run blocker and this unit could use uh, some depth in that area. You know, just get another body in there for rotation wise. It's almost like he's a forgotten guy, but he's a solid player. When you have, especially if he's one of your guys off the bench that you can turn to, uh, turn to. Uh, but the other news is that uh, returning to practice today, Billy Turner, thank you, um, and also KJ Hamler um, coming back to practice. Uh, things are starting to gear up for those two guys. Uh, really excited uh, for them to be hopefully healthy, good to go. And man, KJ Hamler's got a big opportunity in front of him this year. It's year three in the league, but with his speed, with his uh, versatility, 
And with Russell Wilson's propensity to hit the deep ball, um, I think KJ Hamler's got a big chance uh, to make a big, uh, have a big season this year. But God, man, he's got to stay healthy, which has been impossible for him to do so far. Yeah, the one that we wanted to talk about, I meant to look this up before we went to, um, before we went live, is who did the Bills cut? Mm. And I'm typing in yeah. Buffalo Bills official site and I'm getting a bunch of crap. Oh, I'm on the news page though, too. So who did the Bills cut? Now I'm getting a bunch of ads. It shouldn't be this hard to find out. Tavon um, Austin, Matt Hack, traded Cody Ford, uh, placed Ike Butker on uh, the pup list. And they also released, uh, no, that's it. So one, two, three, okay. four, five. It must have been down one or something. And none of those that's were DL. None of those nope. were DL because they've got 16 DL and they'll probably keep 11 between the practice squad. And uh, again, Shaq Lawson's listed third string. He was a freaking destroyer the other day. They were, they were talking coming in about him not poss- possibly not making the team, but he's worked his way into uh, in- into a spot. So I'm just just interested uh, in there. And there there has been a little bit of a K- KJ Hamler uh, talk going on in here. Uh, what what are your expectations for KJ Hamler? And, and you think he is a lock for this team? You think? Oh, he's, he's a lock definitely a lock. It? He's okay. way too talented to not make the team. Um, Unless he's not. He he is. He's still on his rookie contract. He's still cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't. He'd but have to do he's something. Lost a step, you know. If he has and he's not comfortable out there, then they'll put him on pup or something okay. to to hopefully get him back. But there's no way that he is waived um, as a former second round pick with his talent level. Uh, hamstrings are an issue, but uh, there's not many players who actually possess his speed. Um, he's fast among fast players in right. the NFL. It's a fast and, league, and he's fast. Yes. Um, so uh, I, he's really, he's really extremely talented, but he can be out there. He's also still extremely young. I think he was one of the youngest players in his draft class uh, as well, coming out as the red shirt sophomore. So, uh, don't give up on KJ Hamler just yet. I know Broncos country. We saw him in the bills game, but we were quick to give up on chase Isaiah McKenzie out of town. And he's turned out to be a pretty darn good player for the bills there. Uh, I think KJ Hamler is a better receiver than McKenzie is. And, uh, you definitely are hoping he can stay healthy because with him, you have a explosive dynamic on your offense that can kill teams from the slot fade. If you're playing single high, uh, Russell Wilson is going to read that and then just toss it up to an op- empty space and saying, go run it down like a center fielder, KJ. And he can. So um, this should be exciting. And Hamler might play versus Minnesota. You guys remember last year, KJ Hamler had like a 50 yard touchdown uh, versus uh, versus the likes of Minnesota as well. And, and this is the one he might play with versus Minnesota. I, I'd love to see it again. Yeah. Um, I'm rooting for him. You know, but until we see it, do we know? You know, the word's been good. The word has been good. Uh, but that's what it's been so far is word. So, you yeah. know, hopefully it it comes out in the wash. He stays healthy. And he is because he'll say it, you know, I, I, but you don't expect him to say anything else. He's like, no, I'm faster. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm faster than I was. I've put in the work. I'm stronger. I'm more confident. I've been through this before. I know what to expect. And I'm, I'm faster. Yep. And we got uh, Nick D coming and saying Jalen Virgil's a four two. He was a reported four two coming out of Appalachian State, and then at the pro day he ran a four three seven, which is you know home cooking at the pro day there as well. So he's probably closer to a four four guy. And KJ Hamler um, didn't run, um, but he was running I think four two nine at Penn State. Uh, so I think that KJ Hamler is faster. He's also he's not just fast; he's shifty. He's really agile as well when you get the ball, which is more important. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's there's quickness, but again, if you can't change directions, that includes stopping. You know, yeah. at least changing. You know, coming up and stopping on a dime. If you're fast, then that's fine. I'll just back yeah. off you and let you run to me, and then we'll go to a jump ball, and we'll we'll see who if you can beat me on a jump ball. Because um, there's the guy, fast guys. We're, what, yeah. Who are we talking about this morning? Trenton Holiday. I'm like Trenton Holiday is as fast a player as you'll ever see. He's a track guy. He was absolutely a track guy. He wasn't, he wasn't a football player. Um, so there's, there is, uh, yeah, again, I just mentioned this cause we're looking at down the line, there's going to be some more cuts. You know, is there any chance that these injuries have taken a toll on KJ Hamler and he doesn't make this team? And it doesn't, doesn't sound like, uh, that would be the case. I mean, Broncos media and the team has been, you know, they just released a video like a TikTok today of Cortland Judy and KJ Hamler dancing together and the all over, 
uh, the, the media side of the thing. So I, I think it'd be pretty shocking uh, if they did move on from KJ Hamler. But uh, pulling for him too, I don't know if you guys remember earlier uh, this year, he had put him on the podium and talked about how he was in a really dark place after his grandmother passed away and the injury as well. So um, KJ seems like a really authentic, good guy. And uh, man, it'd be great to see him bounce back this season and get his career on track. Cause I think Broncos country could use him. They, they love him because God, he's just going to be highlight real kind of player and uh, be great for him. Obviously great for us. Mark I was gonna say, well, I was just about to say, where's Gary Schrader? Gary Schrader Mark, is coming Mark. on the Mile High Huddle podcast page. He's not on the big one that he usually is. Mark, so Mark I wanted to make sure we said hello to Gary Schrader. Just popped in. So how you doing? You probably think the chat's a little quiet because you're on the smaller Facebook page instead of the big Mile High Huddle page. So uh, we're just glad you're here. It's Mark Schrader. You're mixing up Gary Leeds Palmer and Mark Schrader. Oh, does that, did I say Gary Lee's Palmer? I was just looking, said Gary looking at Mark Schrader. I'm watching yeah. Mark Schrader, and I'm saying Gary Lee's Palmer. Yes, Mark Schrader. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Mark. Texas. We appreciate you. Hope you're doing well down in Texas. Hopefully, you're, uh, you and your wife's health there is doing well as well. Um, so we appreciate you. And uh, always good to hear from you. Good evening. Um, we'll hopefully see you tomorrow morning as well. Uh, so uh, any final thoughts before we start to wrap it up here? Um, obviously, the Broncos down to, uh, what is it, 75 now? Some moves made. Uh, they brought in Divine... O Ogazibo, I probably pronounced his name wrong from Nebraska, moved on from the Scotty, uh, St Stevie Scott, excuse me, Trey Quinn as well, OT Casey Tucker on the injury designation, and Tom Compton on the uh, pup list with Marquis uh, Spencer Zigbo? being earlier. Uh, is, is how I might say I, it might be interesting tomorrow, Nick, is kind of our final thought, or on Thursday when we're back, is we'll, we can go through, um, you know, high candidates for the, 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 to make the 53, you know, who are, who are the guys that are out there? Cause, or just, you know, hit on the, the really key roster battles. I mean, we can look at this in the back end and say, okay, you know, these guys on this column are toast. Um, but we can, where are the real roster battles? There's real roster battles at tight end. There's real roster battles at wide receiver at corner, yeah. um, yeah. is where it's, um, Ooh, goodness. Here we go. Now we can use some prayers for sure. Uh, Mark Schrader comes and he says, thanks. Open heart surgery is set for September 15th. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind and we'll make sure that we're, we're calling out to Broncos country for everybody. Um, calling out everybody for you, Mark. Um, yeah. you're, you're one of the good ones, dude. So God bless. Yeah. Well, hopefully that'll be, uh, hopefully it'll be good and hopefully it'll be, uh, all, feeling good about a Broncos win September 12th. That'll lead you into good outcomes on September 15th. I think that's a Thursday. So uh, we'll be looking out for you there. Um, Sin G come in and saying Denver should keep seven wide receivers. Seems about right. Um, so you got Cortland, Jerry, Judy, KJ Hamler, Montreal, Washington, uh, maybe six, seven. Actually, now that I think about it, maybe it's a little high. Uh, but I think with the, with the practice squad, absolutely. Yeah, with practice squad for sure. Yeah. And a big one coming in from Ethan here saying, uh, red. yeah, God, big time. Uh, what do you guys make of all the playing time for Alberto Cuevanom and prayers for Mark with multiple exclamation points? Absolutely. Prayers for Mark. Um, Alberto Cuevanom needs to learn how to block better, use his body and use his size. I mean, he's six, five, two sixty five. He's bigger than most tight ends out there and he's does not play like it. So, uh, they're out in there. What is it? Grinding his teeth, uh, whatever the phrase is, um, making him earn it and uh, having to work on his uh, blocking. So the offense does not show their hand when he's on the field. They need to be able to have the threat of the run game with him. Or is it, this is your chance. Hmm. You know, this is your chance. If you, if yeah. you're going to play in this offense, you're going to show us, you're going to show us now uh, listening to Zach and uh, Chad talk about Albert. O yesterday, it hit me and I typed it in the background. I said, I'll bet you anything. He was a wide receiver in, in high school. Um, oversized wide receiver who's just thought I got too big to stay there because he sounds like a typical guy that didn't want to play. It wouldn't surprise him to play basketball too. Big basketball player, wide receiver, they're soft. It's a mentality. That's a, that's, it's not, they're not all like that. Don't get me wrong, but they're stereotypes for a reason. And if I see a tight end, it's a little soft. I'm like, bet you played wide receiver in high school where he could get away with it. Yeah. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he played a little basketball too out on the perimeter because he's a little, you know, frankly, he's a, he's a little soft, Nick. And, yeah. you know, one of my favorite phrases is if they don't bite you as puppies, they're not going to bite you as dogs. Yeah. And 
can you put that into him? You know, and the thing is, I don't need a Mac, Mac trucking people out there, even if he's not, you know, lined up in line and going after Joey Bosa or Max Crosby. I, I need him to get in somebody's way and hold his own. Yeah. You know, um, but Ethan, I think this is a spectacular question because I, I, I know what you're going with here is, you know, is it they're trying to get him ready or are they really trying to make a decision on him and he's not pulling his weight right now? I think they're trying to get him ready. I think that he needs the reps, he needs the physicality, and uh, they're putting him in the ring and saying, oh, one more round, buddy. You know, take a few more punches. We got to see you hold up. So uh, hopefully he'll get better on that end, and uh, they're going to need him. I think ideally he would be probably on his way out with uh, Greg Dulcich taking steps forward. But I think at this point with how much time Greg has missed, consider this year a redshirt year. I don't think we're going to see I him agree. hardly at all, unfortunately. I agree. And that's why I think his, his position is safe this year. I think next year, if he doesn't, if he doesn't have a, a breakout type of year, um, then I think I, I have a hard time seeing him on the roster in 2023. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. It's going to be uh, interesting to follow in the Broncos tight end position, not looking great. Um, and how's he doing with the extra reps? I mean, he needs, to, he needs them. I guess he, that's he a, is, he is what he is. You know, yeah. it's, can he get better? Yes, he can. But it, for, for me, it's a mentality right now. Um, he looks great in the passing game. He's a big, gorgeous athlete that can run and catch. Okay. Use him, you know, find, find the ways to use him like that. Um, if I need to, if I'm going to try and smash mouth somebody on third and one, he, he ain't going to be in the lineup. He ain't going to nope. be in there. And I mean, he, despite what did he have? 11 touchdowns, his junior year or redshirt sophomore year at Mizzou. Um, and despite running a four, five 40 at 269 pounds or whatever at six, five fell to the fifth round. He got that S label on him. I guarantee it soft. Yep. Uh, probably. Um, I'll just put it like that. Probably. <laughs> so guys, um, we, uh, that's probably gonna have to do it for us today, man. We, uh, you guys were amazing today with all the uh, support, uh, thoughts and prayers with Mark with the open heart surgery coming up here pretty soon. Um, but Hey, that means that we are inching towards a resolution uh, for your problems there. So um, nothing but good thoughts and good vibes for you there. And uh, hopefully, you know, crossing that mountain pass and getting over it would be great. All downhill from there, right? Uh, a little easier on you. And uh, yeah, EJ wanna, as well. I want to say, Nick, want to say thanks to our, our super chat superstars. Jetty Splash got us going. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Ethan and EJ, you know, Jetty Splash hit lead off. And then the Bash brothers came in and, and started shooting for the fences on there. Um, but Joshua Brooks over on Facebook, uh, Phil McLaughlin several times, Chris Hernandez, Gary Leeds Palmer, Andrew Baker, Charlie Dominguez. Um, Phil, a couple times in there. Appreciate you coming in. So thank you so much. Again, it, it's humbling. It's it's very humbling that, that what y'all do for us. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely, man. You guys are amazing. Uh, we appreciate the heck out of you. Um, We'll see you guys again tomorrow morning on uh, Forging the Falcons, and I'll be back tomorrow night with Maha Insiders. But uh, a lot of news today, a lot of fun, uh, good show. Thanks to Scott for filling in for Carl, who had was Luke was going to fill in for. So Scott's filling in for Luke for filling in for Carl. Either way, we appreciate you. <laughs> Third show today with uh, Scott and I. We we got to go see our spouses, I think, at this point. Um, but we appreciate you guys. <laughs> Have a good. Oh yeah, God. Uh, don't want to speak too loud. Mine's probably upstairs. Um, but uh, no, I got I to gotta get on dinner here. So we appreciate everyone. Uh, we will see you tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening. Uh, make sure you're following Scott and I on Twitter. Scott is at Scout Kennedy. I am at Nick Kendall and MHH. Also, make sure you're following us at BTB Football Pod and BFB underscore pod because that's our show as well. Uh, make sure you're also following us at Mile High Huddle and uh, Huddle Up Pod. And of course, uh, Facebook.com forward slash Mile High Huddle Pod and Facebook.com forward slash Mile High Huddle. And if you haven't done so already, as like Dylan Von Arks likes to say, make sure you subscribe, like, and share over on YouTube. It's the number one place where our show is. Although Facebook's kind of picking up a little bit with the season, so that's great. Uh, we appreciate you anywhere you can share, like, and uh, subscribe. But uh, YouTube's been the the main one, so we appreciate all you guys. Uh, Scott, what's the rest of the night looking? You're gonna hang out with the deer in the backyard, or what's what's going on? Don't get you too know, close. I man. think they finally wandered back into the woods after I can show you some pictures tomorrow of the fawn sleeping in my backyard. It's always kind of nice, but uh, yeah. I might I might kick on a show and then 10:30, you know, hit the lights and get ready and, and come back at it again. We'll be on my channel at YouTube.com/slash C/slash Scott Kennedy talking some uh, some cuts, uh, 
a little bit of some some interesting moves that could affect the Broncos, like Carolina Panthers and a starting quarterback, uh, and in the Atlanta Falcons and and trying to uh, trying to whittle their way down to a fifty three and some of the players that could be available to them. Yep. Absolutely. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, We'll see you guys tomorrow then. Make sure you guys are always choosing kindness and compassion. Thanks so much for a good show tonight. Go Broncos.